So welcome everybody to this free online movement workshop here with um, the instructors of the Discover Health Movement membership. And we wanted to bring this free online workshop to you so that you can get a little taster of what our membership is all about. The three movement modalities that we present um, in our recorded classes and our live classes and for you to just get moving. It's so important for us, especially this summer. Things are starting to come back to normal. So you might find your schedule is um, getting a little bit fuller. It's really important to set some time aside so that you are taking care of your health and you are moving, working on your physical activity. So if you are unfamiliar with our membership, it's an online membership um, where we do have live classes. You can join us through Zoom, just like we are um, gathered here tonight. We record our classes too, so if they don't fit with your schedule, you're able to watch those at your convenience. And we will be bringing back, um, hopefully pretty soon, some live in-person classes and workshops so that you can interact with um, some like-minded individuals and us, the instructors. We can answer questions for you, that sort of thing. So tonight, each of the three instructors are going to be presenting some pretty simple movement um, drills and exercises, all of which are going to be seated. So if you've been sitting all day and you need to stand up, go ahead, you can do that as well. But all of the movements you'll be able to do in a chair. So really accessible um, and you can really do them anywhere. If you're sitting in an office or at home on the couch, maybe you incorporate a couple of these movements um, as well. So um, if you don't know me, my name is Megan Vestal and I am a registered yoga teacher and I teach the Discover Yoga class as part of our um, membership. And if you wanna join live, that's nine to 10 a.m. on Friday mornings. I also have here with me um, Lisa Burke. She's going to be sharing with you South Myofascial Release. Um, she'll tell you a little bit more about that and then we'll get to doing some movements either with a tennis ball or maybe you remember already and you've picked up some of the rad roller balls. Um, you may or may not um, have one of those handy for you. Um, she teaches her class live on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. to noon, so you can check in and join her live or watch the recordings in our membership library. And then after Lisa, we have Jim. Jim is our Movement for Longevity teacher, so he's really working with um, your proprioception, uh, a little bit of that mind-body connection as well. So he is going to be presenting his movement modality, and you'll get to, to hear from him in a little bit as well. So with that, we'll get started. You want to grab a sturdy chair. So preferably one that doesn't have wheels and something that has a nice firm base to it. So you're not uh, sinking back into a couch. You might be tempted to uh, relax a little bit too deeply if you're sitting somewhere really comfortable. So I'm gonna start with some really simple breathing and some yoga techniques. If you're new to yoga, they're perfect to try. And really our membership in general is great for beginners or if you're really active and you need some um, recovery classes before and after your activity to kind of uh, work some different areas of the body. So with that, we'll get started with yoga. So go ahead and come to your chair, finding your seated position. And we wanna ground the feet just having the feet about hip distance apart, but instead of crossing the ankles or crossing the legs, you wanna keep the feet grounded. Then go ahead and bring your hands to your lap or maybe let your hands rest on the seat of the chair. And we'll focus first on building up a nice tall spine, working on our posture here. You can close your eyes or you can look someplace out on the horizon line, just a nice soft gaze. Go ahead and relax, kind of from the top down to the bottom. So relaxing the muscles in your face, letting go of any facial expression, relaxing the jaw, even the eyes within the eye sockets. Let your shoulders 
kind of drop down, melting down away from the ears. Letting your hands rest wherever it is that they've made contact with the legs or the chair. And start to bring your awareness to your breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. Your breath may or may not be something that you think about throughout the day. So just taking our attention there. Breathing in, breathing out. Nice, long, full, and deep breaths. Start to direct your breathing down into the abdomen, down into the belly. Feel your belly inflate with air and compress when you exhale. Some deep belly breaths, great to set the tone for a movement practice to really get us kind of grounded and centered before we start moving every which way. Go ahead and take one more deep, full breath while still. And then we'll inhale through the nose. And as you exhale, simply drop your chin down towards your chest. Starting to lengthen the back of the neck into the back of the shoulders and the upper back. Keep your shoulders heavy and relaxed. And then simply from side to side, we're going to be tracing the collarbones with our chin. So there doesn't need to be any connection between chin and chest, but moving in that direction. Go ahead and inhale, take your gaze over one shoulder. And exhale, bring your chin back to chest, back to center. Inhale, looking over to the other side. And exhale, back to center. Do two more rounds. Inhale, looking over one shoulder. Exhale, back to neutral. Inhale, looking over to the other side. And exhale, back to center. Do just one more round with your own rhythm of breath. Then when you're back to this kind of center position, chin to chest, inhale, we'll take the gaze forward, lifting the chin so that it's parallel to the ground. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, let's drop our right ear down towards our right shoulder. Keeping both shoulders relaxed, finding a bit of a side stretch in that left side of the neck. Continue to breathe and just Observing, noticing any little sensations that you might feel in the face, the neck, the shoulders, or elsewhere throughout your physical body. Take one more full breath in and out. And then inhale, stack your head over your spine, sitting up nice and tall. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, we'll drop the left ear down towards the left shoulder. So a counter stretch, this time we're opening up the right side of the neck down into the shoulder. Continuing to breathe. Good. Let's inhale, stack the head over the spine, sitting up nice and tall. Now, if you found that you are seated more towards the back of your chair and you're kind of leaning on that back support, go ahead and move forward slightly so that there is space between the back body and the back of the chair. We're going to do a little seated cat and cow. If you're familiar with yoga, we tend to do these cat and cow spinal movements while we're down on the floor on hands and knees, but it's a really easy posture that we can do while seated in a chair. 
So we're gonna come to our seated position, tall spine, bring the arms out alongside you. If you have arms on your chair, maybe you're sending your arms out a little bit further away from your body. Let's inhale and bring the arms just out to shoulder height. And then bend the elbows, bring the fingertips just behind the ears, kind of slightly supporting the skull. We don't want the whole weight of the head to rest into the hands. Elbows wide, opening up across the collarbones, across the chest. So we're gonna come into this seated cat and cow pose. We'll start with cow. Let's inhale, let the belly and chest come forward, send your elbows back behind you, lift the gaze. Good, take another breath in here. And as you exhale, we'll round through the back, bring the elbows in front of the shoulders and drop your chin down toward your chest. This is our seated cat pose. On your next in-breath, inhale, come back to that seated cow, extending through the spine. And exhale to round through the spine, chin to chest, elbows draw in. One more, inhale to open, extend the back. And exhale to round, flexing here. Inhale, come back up, nice neutral spine, and we'll release the arms out and down. If you need to do some rolls with the shoulders, they're feeling a little residual uh, sensation after our cat and cow, go ahead. And now we'll do a similar movement with the arms, but we'll come into some lateral flexion, some side bending with the body. So inhale, send the arms out to shoulder height. Bend the elbows, fingertips coming behind the head, behind the skull. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, we'll side bend to the right. You can take this as subtle or as deep as you like here. Keep both of your sit bones grounded to your chair. Inhale, come back up to center. And exhale, we'll side bend to the left. If you're moving in the opposite direction than me, no worries, you'll even it out on both sides. Inhale back to center and exhale to your right. Inhale to center, tall spine. As you exhale, side bend to your left. One more round. Inhale, come back to center, exhale to your right. Inhale to center, exhale to your left. It's our last one. Inhale, come back to center, release the hands from the head, send the arms out, and let the arms drape down alongside the body. Again, if you feel like you need some rolls with the shoulders, maybe some shakeouts of the arms, what I like to emphasize is for you to listen to your body. You might feel certain things here and there that you haven't felt before. We're gonna do some movement, again, matching with our breath. Let's inhale, send the arms up as high as you can. Maybe that's up and overhead. Maybe that's just a shoulder height. As you exhale, we'll drop the arms down. Making sure our posture, we're sitting up nice and tall, pressing up through the crown of the head. Again, inhale, lift and reach the arms up. And exhale to lower. Again, inhale, lift and reach. Exhale to lower. Good, a little different this time. We'll inhale, lift the arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, we'll take a twist to the right. So you can cross your left hand over to your right knee or the outside of your right leg. And you can bring your right hand either to the seat of your chair, maybe to the back of your chair. We wanna stay upright in our twist. So the crown, the top of the head is still pointing up towards the sky. And if you feel like you wanna take this twist a little bit deeper, take your gaze back towards your right shoulder or towards the back of your chair. 
Continue to breathe here. In none of these poses are we holding our breath. We want to keep that flow of air coming in and out through the body. And if this is feeling too intense, you can unwind slightly. If you want a little bit more, take it just that deeper towards the right side. We'll be here for one more full breath. And on your next inhale, turn back to face center. Send the arms up and overhead. You probably guessed where we're going. As you exhale, we'll twist to the left. That right hand can cross over to the left leg. Left hand either coming to the seat of your chair, maybe the back of the chair, or if you have a chair with arms, you can hold on. Sitting up tall. We haven't lost the height in our back by rounding in our twist. We're still upright. If that means backing off a little bit or coming a little bit deeper, listen to your body. Maybe take your gaze back towards the left shoulder and continue to breathe. One more full breath here, in and out through the nose. Then we'll inhale, turn back to face center. Send the arms up and overhead. Let's exhale, bring the hands down together at the heart center. That's going to conclude my demonstration of a seated yoga practice, something that you might encounter in my Discover Yoga class part of the Discover Health Movement membership live on Friday mornings at nine. So now I'll turn it over to Lisa Burke. She is going to be guiding us through some self myofascial release. Hello, I'm Lisa Burke. I am a self myofascial release instructor at Discover Health Movement membership. Thanks for joining us this evening. So that was a great uh, little seated yoga sequence with Megan. Thank you so much for connecting us to our breath and getting some body movement going on. So I'll just quickly share a little bit about fascia, just in case you're not familiar with what the fascia actually is. So it's a connective tissue. Anywhere you have skin, there is a layer of fascia right underneath your skin. It, also runs deeper and it surrounds every muscle, every muscle fiber, every organ, every vein, every artery, everything inside of our body has a covering of fascia around it. So it's a flexible, strong connective tissue. And it's one continuous interconnected system from head to toe without interruption. And it's a very intelligent system. It has many nerve endings. It has more nerve endings than anywhere else in the body except the skin. So it's second only to the skin and the number of nerve endings. So it's constantly communicating with itself, with the other organs in the body, with our proprioception, or where we are in space. And it's constantly remodeling itself. So we have the opportunity at any moment to change our fascia. So we do this through yoga, through movement, for longevity as well as self myofascial release. And self myofascial release is a gentle manipulation of the connective and soft tissues of the body. And we use, um, today we'll be using myofascial release balls or if you have tennis balls, work just fine. Um, when we get deeper into the body, there are other pieces of equipment we can use, but today we're just gonna use the tennis balls or the myofascial release balls that you have. So we'll go ahead and get started there in our seat. And we're gonna work on our feet. So you can grab, if you have the rad rounds that you've purchased from Discover Health Functional Medicine Center, you can use either of the three single myofascial balls that you would like. We're just gonna do one foot at a time. Um, I think for the sake of you maybe being able to see me better, I'll use the green one, it's a little bit bigger. Again, it's a preference, whatever you feel better with. If you grab one ball and you discover that it's not quite right for you, then go ahead and switch out in the middle while we're working through this. So first, just land in your seat. Have a nice tall spine. So 
you'll want to sit a little more forward in your chair because this will help you add a little more pressure or you can sit yourself back to decrease the pressure underneath um, the foot. But we'll start out just sitting up nice and tall, reconnecting with your breath as Megan guided us into earlier. Just pause for a moment and breathe again to notice the breath and have a comfortably full breath in and out. And the breath is our guide in this practice. So less is more. We're not trying to force these tissues into submission. We're trying to gently coax them, coax them there. And we use the breath as the guide. So if usually if tension is starting to creep in somewhere or if we're starting to feel tenderness or tightness, we'll notice it right away in our breath because our breath will either become shallow or, or we will start to hold our breath. So we wanna continually be, continually be checking in that our breath is moving freely in and out. So I'm gonna start underneath my right foot and you can as well if you'd rather start with your left, that's fine. So I'm gonna take my mouth off your release ball and I'm gonna plant my heel and I'm gonna let my foot land right at the center of the ball of my foot, but just rolling off of it back towards your arch, but getting into the pad of the ball of the foot more than the arch. So letting the heel rest on the floor and letting that foot land on the ball and then really relaxing your toes. So your foot might not look exactly the way mine does. As long as you're not holding your toes up, you're fine. So we want to stay nice and relaxed and you might even pull your toes back for a moment just to notice how it tenses the bottom of your foot. And we want to keep the bottom of the foot nice and soft. So go ahead and land there. Notice how that feels. Make sure you're breathing. You can rest your arms into your legs if you want to put a little more pressure into the myofascial ball. And if it's too much, you can sit yourself a little further back and take some pressure off of that. So from here, we're just going to start to roll the foot back and forth. Let the ball roll just to the back of the ball of the foot. Nice, gentle, even pressure. Remembering to check in with your breath and notice how the foot feels all the way across the ball of the foot there. And then we'll go ahead and stop that movement and we'll let the ball find its way right to the center of our foot. So right in the middle of our arch, front to back, side to side. Again, keeping the heel planted on the floor. Let the ball land right underneath the arch. Let the toes be nice and soft. I like to take a moment to check in, just a gauge of how much pressure is appropriate and to make sure my breath is nice and fluid. And notice if you need to back off or push a little more pressure into there but not the most pressure you can stand, right? We wanna be able to breathe. We're gently coaxing these tissues into softness. So from here, we're gonna to start to find movement. We're gonna spiral our way out from the center. So taking your time, not moving too fast. And I'm gonna guide you to move the ball in a counterclockwise motion. So just moving slowly and mindfully, staying connected to your breath, noticing any tight or tender spots, noticing if your breath has a reaction to that, or maybe it's just a sensation you feel in your foot. And feel free to pause in those areas and investigate a little bit, see how that feels. So this area of the foot as you spiral out, and the reason we're going in a counterclockwise motion, from a reflexology standpoint, this is our digestive system. So I like to keep the ball rolling to help the digestive system move in its proper direction. So that's another thing to keep in mind as you feel little tightness along the way, maybe just noticing and we can come back and talk about that another time if you like. So again, making sure you're breathing. So from there, we're gonna find stillness with the ball of the foot planted and let the ball fall right where the arch and the heel connect. So now my ball of my foot is planted, my heel is lifted, but my foot is still resting on that ball there. So again, pause and breathe for a moment. Notice this is a great one if you have plantar fasciitis. So remembering less is more, not forcing into submission, finding that right amount of pressure that's perfect for you. And then we'll start to get movement in there by just wagging our heel back and forth. So crossing cross fiber across that plantar fascia here. Remembering to breathe. 
You can also walk your toes forward and let that rolling work its way back into the heel, forward and back a little bit. One area feels better than another for you. Feel free to spend your time there. Also, if you feel any crunchiness in that heel, it could be a sort of starting of bone spurs. And um, just my little experience when I first started practicing self myofascial release about two years ago now, I had some crunchies in there and I've broken all of that up. So it's really a good practice. I roll my feet almost every day. So from there, we're gonna just draw lines from toe to heel and let the pressure be as we roll out and then just tap the ball back to starting. And I like to make a line down each toe. So just follow the line of each toe. And then I'll go back and follow the line in between each toe. I find I get really good coverage that way of the foot. And then for the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scribble. So nice and light, really no pressure. Sit back more than you're sitting forward. You can go in circles, up and down, side to side. You can get all the way out into the toes, to the back of the heel, inner line of the foot, the outer line of the foot. Nice and light. And then we'll just set the ball aside, land with your two feet on the floor, maybe close your eyes, sit up nice and tall, connect to your breath, and just notice any senses of sensation in the bottoms of the feet. Maybe that right foot feels a little juicier, a little freer, maybe a little flatter, more connected to the floor, a little softer. And then we'll switch sides over to the left. So again, we'll start right at the center in line with that middle toe at the ball of the foot, but a little lower down on the ball of the foot. We'll plant the heel, let the ball of the foot land on the ball and really soften the toes. And if you wanna take a moment there to flex the toes back to feel that tension, so you really know what it feels like to be relaxed here. Connecting to your breath, checking in how much pressure is right for you. And it doesn't have to be the same side to side. If you land on this side and the same amount of pressure put into it as you did on the other side doesn't feel right, then back off. You don't have to match equally. But do notice those differences in your body side to side. Connecting to the breath will start to roll foot side to side with the ball roll underneath that back portion of the ball of the foot, keeping the toes nice and soft, keeping your breath flowing freely. If the ball gets away from you, just bring it on back. And then we'll pause that rolling motion and we'll roll the ball right to the center of the foot, right at the center of the arch there. Again, my heel is still planted. My toes are nice and soft. You could lift the heel, but I find that's a little too intense. So keeping the heel connected to the floor is um, my preferred way of doing this. Again, the toes are nice and soft and we'll start those that spiraling outward from center, nice and slow. Again, continuing in the counterclockwise motion because the digestive tract runs from the right foot to the left foot. Connect to the breath, notice any areas of tightness or tenderness, feeling free to hang out there and investigate what's happening. Maybe noticing if it needs a little less pressure, maybe concentrating in that area if you need to. Listening to your body, really paying attention to what the body needs here. So we'll go ahead and plant the ball of the foot and let the ball land underneath where the arch and the heel come together. So the heel now is lifted. And we'll still pause, connect to our breath. And we'll start that movement side to side. So let the heel rock back and forth. Breathing as you go. Letting the toes walk forward to roll back into the heel. Making your way back and forth in that area, wherever feels appropriate for you. And then we'll draw those lines from toe to heel. So the pressure is as we roll out from the toe down to the heel. And then we'll release that pressure, just tap the ball back for to begin again at the next toe, and we'll follow the line of each toe. And if you like to really connect the breath, exhale as you roll from toe to heel. 
then you can make those lines in between. And then we'll gentle, light little scribbling in all directions. Can be round and round, side to side, front to back, all the way through the toes, through the heel, the inner line and outer line, the foot. And then we'll set the ball aside. We'll land with our two feet on the ground. Maybe close your eyes, find your nice tall spine, and just notice your two footprints. Again, noticing any sense of sensation. Maybe it feels a little freer, a little juicier. I always feel a little more hydrated. And if you don't feel any differences, that's okay. If you're new to this, it's your first time practicing, that's all okay. So from here, if you have two balls the same size and density, go ahead and grab those. <clears throat> We're going to target the um, sciatic nerve, really. So the piriformis muscle, and if you sit a lot, it can get very aggravated, and you can understand I should probably sitting on it <laughs> all day long. So we're going to sit on both of these balls at the same time. So you want to sit a little further away from your seat back so you can sit up nice and tall and make sure your feet are firmly planted on the floor and holding on to the edge of your chair. Or if you're sitting at the table, you can put your hands on the table. And we're going to take each ball. So make sure you're sitting upright so that your pelvis is nice and neutral. So make sure your tailbone's not tucked under, right? When we did that cat posture, that was the tucked under tailbone. And we don't want it tilted so far forward like we were in our cow pose. So find that right in the center, perfect balance. And we're going to place the myofascial release balls right in the center of our seat. And when you get there, you might need to play around a little bit. So if you feel something bony, those are probably your sits bones. So we want to be behind the sits bones. So go ahead and adjust there. Also, another thing, you don't want to feel anything sharp, shooting, stabbing. You don't want to create tingling or numbness. So if you feel any of those sensations, back off. Maybe take the balls out. Take a breath for a moment. Maybe come back in, maybe in a little different spot. So if you only have one ball, it's okay. Go ahead and tuck one ball on one side. You might want to put your hand underneath the other side to help lift you up a little bit. But just breathe and notice where you feel. You can even move around, right? You're on a little surface now. You can even rock side to side gently. You might even feel what that cat and cow movement feels like. And you might find the, your perfect aha spot, right? And if you do, go ahead and hang out there and check in with your breath, make sure you're breathing. So another way to get a little bit deeper and deeper at that sciatic and releasing piriformis if you can and you would like to cross your ankle over your knee. So I'm starting with my right ankle over my left knee. And see how that is along the way. If you get part way and you can't continue, pause there and check in with your breath. Maybe adjust where that ball landed a little bit. And breathe there for a moment. You can give your knee a little press open if that's appropriate. If you need a little less pressure, you can always use your hands to lift you up slightly, or you can place a layer of blanket between you and the myofascial release ball. So several options there for you. If it's too intense, waist back off. Connect with your breath. And then we're going to and switch to the other side. So we'll uncross that right leg. So you can cross the left leg. And also, again, same thing, noticing any differences side to side. My left side is definitely tighter. Ooh, got a little zinger there. Making sure I can breathe. Adjusting my spot just slightly there. Ah, yes, sweet spot. So finding that Goldilocks spot, the spot that's not too hard, not too soft, but just right, and pressing that knee open if it's appropriate for you. If it's not, you know, you can hold the knee up if that's better for you, or if getting into this position really sends a zinger and catches your breath, go ahead and just leave the foot on the floor. You can maybe lean a little deeper into it or roll around a little bit. So many options and trusting your body and what it needs and what feels good to you. So we'll uncross that left leg, take a pause and a breath with both feet on the floor. We'll remove the myofascial release balls, set them down. 
And just pause for a moment, sitting up nice and tall, noticing how you feel. Maybe you feel a release down the back of your legs. Maybe you feel a little bit of release in the low back or upper glutes. And then we're, that's um, our myofascial release um, little sampler today. And I will pass it over to Jim and he will take us through movement for longevity. I'm just waiting for Coach Trish to change the spotlight to me. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Lisa. I'm feeling very chilled, so hopefully I can get through this stuff without taking a nap. Um, okay, so yes, Jim Chappett, I teach the movement for longevity class. So the things I focus on are balance, proprioception or your sense of your body in space and a bit of strength and vision stuff. So putting those, all those different things together, finding the right drills for you to make your life easier or allow you to do the things that you really wanna do. If you have better balance and you're a bit stronger, you feel more comfortable getting out and doing cross country skiing or going for a hike and things like that. And sometimes it's it's simply being strong and confident enough to get down to the floor so you can play with your grandkids or your kids and being able to get back up. So uh, today, what I'm going to take you through are a couple of drills to just stimulate the inner ear that can improve your balance. Also do a couple of visual drills, which can also improve your balance and also improve your ability to focus. And I will also do some grip strength and then we'll see where we are for time. One thing I'm gonna go through very quickly is just if you're not sure how good your balance is, I'm gonna show you really quickly some things that you can try on your own to test your balance. The number one thing when you do these is Make sure you're safe, this space around you. If you feel like you're gonna fall, the most important thing is to keep yourself face, uh, safe first. I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit. So, just adjust the angle slightly. Okay. So, the first thing to try is just standing with your feet together. And if you feel comfortable and safe, you would then close your eyes and see if you can hold this for at least 15 seconds. If your balance is pretty good, that should be easy for most people. And then from there, the other two options with your feet is you can do sort of like you're on a tightrope. So one foot in front of the other, a little extra weight on the back foot. If you feel safe, you then close your eyes and see if you can still hold that. Again, you're gonna try to go for at least 15 seconds. You then switch to the feet around that way as well. And then the other one that can be an interesting challenge is doing sort of this tree pose. And then again, if you can hold this safely with your eyes open, trying it with your eyes closed. And again, the goal would be, if your balance is really good, being able to hold any of those poses with your eyes closed for at least 15 seconds. If any of those are really challenging for you, the classes that I do are the types of things that will help you progress those so that it, you can get to the point where your balance is actually quite good and you can do all of those. Okay, so we're already pretty warmed up, but first I wanna just take a moment to um, continue to, to grease the groove of our cervical spine because we're gonna be doing some head movements. So first I just want you to nod down and then do a nice, slow, big circle around, find the edges. Gentle, slow, and then reverse direction. And do a couple more circles. And that's just to make sure that we're gonna be okay to move our head. So I'm gonna show you first the movements we're going to do. So. We're going to turn our head all the way to the right, 
turn all the way to the left. We're going to look all the way up and look all the way down. And then we're going to do some diagonals where we're going to turn up to the right, down to the left, and then up to the left and down to the right. So the trick is, especially when seated, our nervous system will tend to feel quite safe. So we can increase the stimulus of this inner ear and balance system by closing our eyes when we do this. So what that's going to do is it's really going to have our vestibular system focused on what we're doing, keeping track of where our head is. So I'm going to talk you through the motions. So I'm going to close my eyes and we're going to do five in each direction. So I'm going to turn to the right and then turn back all the way to the left. That's one. Turn back to the right, left, right, left. That's three, right, left, right, left. And keep your eyes closed when you come back to neutral. So if you were doing this on your own and you wanted to make it more challenging, you could move faster. But we're going to keep it relatively slow paced today. So now keeping my eyes closed, I'm going to look all the way up and then look all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, down, one more, up, down. If possible, keep your eyes closed and come back to neutral. And then you're going to diagonally go up and to the right and down to the left, up right, down left, up right, down left, up right, down left, one more, up right, down left. Again, if possible, keep your eyes closed and come back to neutral. And then we're going to go up left, down right, up left, down right, up left, down right, up left, down right, one more, up left, down right. Come back to center. Now open your eyes and just take a breath. So depending on how robust your vestibular system is, that could be quite challenging or it could be really easy. So to make it, if it felt too easy, what you would do is you would try the same thing standing up, say with your feet together. And if that still feels easy, you could try it in other more challenging balance positions, such as your feet in line or standing on one leg. If that felt really challenging for you, the first thing you might try is doing a, just a few to each side, or you could take a break in between each direction. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is a couple of vision drills. So the first one, I'm going to use a pencil that has some writing on it. What we're going to do is we're just going to, we're going to focus on something and we're going to move whatever we're focused on. Uh, sorry, we're going to move our head while we stay focused on the object. So if you don't have something handy, you can just use your own thumbnail. You would just go a slight arm bend. So just about 18 inches in front of your face. So the motions we're going to use are the same ones we just did, but in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this object or your thumb for the whole time. So find your focus and then small turn your head to the right and to the left. You got to keep the motion small and slow enough that you can keep focus on the object. So it's three. That's four, and that's five. I am going to take a little break in between because these visual ones can be quite challenging if you haven't done this in the past. So now, again, I'm going to come back to my focus, and now I'm going to move my head up, down, up, down. Again, just really keep focused on that. If you're struggling to keep focus, you need to move your head less or slower. One more and take a little break. And now the diagonals, which can be challenging. And my suggestion is keep the motions relatively small. So find your focus 
go up right, down left, and do it's three, four, five, and relax, and we'll do one more diagonal the other direction. And these can be, as I said, the reason why I'm taking the rest in between is they can actually be quite challenging because your brain is trying to maintain this focus while your head is moving. So up left, down right, two, three, four, five. And what we're using there, what we're stimulating is this vestibulo-ocular reflex. So it's your brain's method of keep allowing you to keep focus on something while your head is moving. The next one we're going to do is the opposite. It's the vestibulo-ocular reflex cancellation, because what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the object and we're going to move the object in our head at the same time and same speed. So it's the other side of the coin. So you find your focus, either your letter or your thumb, and just move both to the right and to the left, keeping focus. So if you're struggling to focus, just move more slowly. The background is going to blur a little bit, which can be stimulating. Come back to center, take a little break, find your focus, and just gonna do little motions up and down. It's two, three, four, five, and relax. And we will do the diagonals as well, which can be a bit challenging, but definitely worth a go. I'm just gonna find. So again, make your motions relatively small. Just keep your focus, move at this diagonal. Challenge your eyes to stay focused on this while you're moving. Let's do one more. And a little relax, rest the eyes a bit. And then other diagonals, so up left. It's two, three, four, five, and relax. So normally what I would do then, I'd do those drills, and then I might retest my balance and see, did I immediately get an improvement in my balance? And if I did, then I would know, oh, that's a great drill. I can just spend a couple of minutes each day doing that, and within a couple of weeks usually, my system will lock it in and I'll have a nice improvement in my balance. Okay, one last visual drill before we move on to some, a little bit of a strength that we can do seated is if you wanna improve your eye's ability to focus, one of the things we want is as something moves closer to our face, our eyes should converge in. So what we can do is a pencil push up. So you're gonna, Cover one eye and hold your pencil out. What you're gonna do, so the pencil is in front of my eye or in front of my nose, roughly. You're gonna move it closer and then move it towards the other eye. Make sure you can keep an eye on it. Just hold that and rest and relax. We're only gonna do one on each side because again, these can be quite taxing if you haven't done these. So other side, I'm gonna start with the pencil in the middle. I'm gonna move it closer then slide the pencil while I watch it. Just keeping the pencil right at the edge so I can still see it and holding that. And relax and rest. And that's just exercising the muscles that pull our eyes in. And if we do that on a regular basis, your eye's ability to converge and keep focus will improve. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna do is a bit of strength and it's grip strength. And again, this is just one of these things that the ability to carry things and pick things up is 
something we need in everyday life. So I'm going to show you a little routine you can do that's fairly simple and can just improve the connection between your mind and your muscles. So we're going to hold our hands in different positions and then press against either the desk or um, your uh, own legs. So the first one, I'm just going to see if I can back up a little bit. So the, the first one, we want our hands in a slight bent position. So in this case, I'm going to use my own legs. And now once I'm in this position, I'm going to try to press my fingers down while I'm resisting. We're just going to hold that and then relax. The second one, we're just going to start in this position. So again, you could just do it right in your legs and you're going to try to drive your fingers down and your legs preventing your wrist from bending and relax. The next one is going to be this position. So I'm just going to hook my hands around the front of my knees and I'm going to drive the fingers into the front of my knee. And relax. We also want to do the reverse. So you could do something like this, or in this case, I'm going to go against the front of my desk here. So I'm going to do that. So block your hand and then press. So you're trying to straighten your wrists, but it's blocked. And then relax. The next one, you're going to do this and you're going to try to lift your hand this way. But again, you're going to block it with, say, the bottom of a desk or something like that. So find your position and then press, try to straighten. And relax. And I'm just doing each of these for, you know, eight to 10 seconds. The last one, this one can be a bit challenging. So we're going to do one at a time. I'm going to block with my other hand and then pull my fingers towards this hand. And relax. And then other side. Pull. And relax. And then the last two, we're going to try to turn our hands this way. And what I'm going to do in this case is grab the desk like this. So I'm going to try to pull my hands that way, but my thumb is going to prevent me from doing it. So just try to twist. And relax. And then the last one. I can do this is same thing. I'm going to try to move my hands back to this way, but I'm going to block it with the desk. So twist. And relax. So what you're doing is you're just hitting your wrist, getting your isometric hold of trying to contract against that resistance in all these different positions, which is going to help your brain really map the muscles and improve that connection. So nice little routine you can do every day or a couple of times a week and just really get that grip to be more reliable. All right. And that's the little taster for your movement for longevity. All right. So 
Thank you all. Thanks. If you are able to join us live tonight for this workshop, um, or perhaps you are tuning into the recording, we're going to have this on our YouTube page and share it across our social media. If you are not yet a member and you want to either learn more, maybe watch a few more of our free videos, we have some class excerpts kind of out there on YouTube. So you can find us at the Discover Health Functional Medicine Center YouTube page. Um, and then our website, if you would like to sign up for a membership and check out our schedule, that's going to be discoverhealthfmc.com slash hashtag movement. If you're watching this on YouTube, check the description box below. That's going to take you right to our page where you can look at a couple different options for the membership types that we have. If you were interested in one or all of our movement modalities, we're here live each and every week. We have Lisa with her self myofascial release class. That's Tuesdays at 11 a.m. to noon. Then Jim is teaching his movement for longevity class on Wednesday evenings, 5 to 6 p.m. And then I am teaching Discover Yoga every Friday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. So we hope to see you in some of our classes coming up. Again, I thank you for tuning in to this online movement workshop, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.